to start with the smallest level of organization and work our way up. So let's start by talking about atoms. Atoms are the smallest unit of matter, meaning they're the smallest pieces that you can break something down into before it no longer really exists as matter anymore. There are many different types of atoms on Earth. We can look at the periodic table to see all the different types of atoms we have. Each of the different types of atoms gives us a different element. So here's a periodic table with a number of elements on it. Not all of these elements are found in living things. And not all of the elements that we need in living things are needed in great amounts. The four elements that we need in the largest amounts in living things are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. These elements make up the bulk of living things. But we do need a lot of other elements in smaller amounts. We need things like phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, sodium, potassium, and calcium in moderate amounts. These are particularly important for things like building proteins and DNA and allowing our muscles and nerves to work the way they are supposed to work. Other elements we need only in very small or trace amounts. The rest of the elements that we need in trace amounts are indicated here in the bright yellow colors. These are the things that we often think of as the minerals in our diet, things like zinc and magnesium that you would find in a multivitamin. Let's take a look at the structure of an atom. If we go down to one single atom, we can model it like this. An atom has three different types of particles in it called the subatomic particles. We have protons and neutrons, which are a little bit bigger particles, that are found clumped together in the middle of the atom in the nucleus. And then, zipping around the nucleus with incredible amounts of energy are very tiny particles called the electrons. Each of these types of subatomic particle has its own charge. Protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge, and neutrons, as you might guess from their names, are neutral. They don't have a charge. We're going to look at each of these subatomic particles in a little bit more detail, starting with the protons. Protons are extremely important because the number of protons in the nucleus is what determines the identity of the atom. The number of protons tells you which element it is. The number of protons in the nucleus of an atom is called the atomic number. We can look at the periodic table to see the atomic number of all of the different elements. The atomic number is usually shown above the symbol in the periodic table. Let's say we had an atom that had five protons in its nucleus. We can look at the periodic table for the element that has an atomic number of five. That's boron. And now we know that the atom that we have is an atom of boron. Or if I have an atom of oxygen, if we look at the periodic table, we can see that oxygen has an atomic number of eight. So if I have an atom of oxygen, I know it has eight protons in it. The number of protons is so important that you can't change the number of protons without changing the identity of the atom. If I have an atom of oxygen, so it has eight protons in it, and I take one of the protons out, I no longer have oxygen. If it only has seven protons, it can't be oxygen. Now it's nitrogen instead, because nitrogen has seven protons. The neutrons are also found in the nucleus, but they don't contribute to the identity of the atom. Instead, they contribute to the weight of the atom. On the periodic table, usually found under the symbol, we see the atomic mass. The atomic mass tells us about the weight of the atom, and the atomic mass tells us the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if we look at oxygen, it has an atomic number of eight. That tells us we have eight protons. And the atomic mass, if we round to the nearest whole number, is 16. If we have 8 protons and a total of 16 for the weight, we know there have to be 8 neutrons there. Let's look at another example. Let's look at sodium. Sodium has an atomic number of 11, so we know that it has 11 protons. The atomic mass of sodium, if we round to the nearest whole number, is 23. If we have a total mass of 23 and we have 11 protons, that means we must have 12 neutrons. 
it is possible to have different numbers of neutrons without changing the identity of the atom. For example, you can have carbon. If we look at carbon, it has an atomic number of six, so it always has six protons. The atomic mass listed is 12, so it usually has six neutrons as well. But we sometimes have carbon that has eight neutrons, and that gives that carbon an atomic mass of 14. When we have two different atoms that have the same number of protons, so it's the same type of atom, but they have different numbers of neutrons, we call those isotopes. So you can have carbon-12, that's carbon that has six protons and six neutrons, or you could have carbon-13, that's carbon with six protons but seven neutrons, or you can have carbon-14, which would be carbon with six protons and eight neutrons. There are different isotopes of many different elements on the periodic table. There's one way in which the isotopes are significant for our purposes. Not all isotopes are stable. Some numbers of neutrons make the nucleus of an atom unstable. These unstable atoms want to become more stable, and to do that, they release energy. And that energy that's released by unstable isotopes is what we call radiation. So things like polonium or uranium or certain isotopes of carbon even release energy in order to become more stable. They release radiation. Now radiation is definitely dangerous. It can damage cells. It can cause burns. It can damage the DNA and lead to cancer. But radiation also has uses. And I'd like you to think about what sorts of things radioactive isotopes could be useful for. When is radiation a helpful thing?